Hey everybody, it's Alex from Astronauty Games here. Recently, we posted a video that showcased our open world sandbox solar system, allowing you to travel enormous distances without any load screens. Now this took a lot of research and trial and error on my end to try and get this implemented, and during the process I found out that nothing out there was related to Unreal's world composition and space games. So I thought, hey, maybe I'll post a video to help out any aspiring game developers as well. So let's go ahead and get that started. I'm going to start with a blank slate here. I don't want to start in the map that I'm already using, so I'm going to create a new folder to place a new level in. I'm just going to name that tutorial, and we'll do a new level. I'm going to call this one Charlie Persistent. Let's go ahead up and load Charlie. I decided that Charlie's going to be the name of our star. So we have loaded Charlie Persistent here. There's nothing in this level. It is a blank slate, which is great. What I'm going to do, and this is just going to be for me, not necessarily for you, I have a couple things I want to place in here. First of all, our star generator, which is going to create a star field so I can tell when I'm rotating and moving around. And then I also want to place a directional light. So we have some basic light in here. And lastly, I'm going to place our player fighter in here so we have something to actually play with. Let me go ahead and change this. So everything's going to work correctly for me, and I'm going to save this project. Let me go ahead and play. And our star field is there. Ship's there. Everything's great. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. What I'm going to do to get world composition going is I'm simply just going to enable world composition. It's under the world settings tab here. I'm going to click that. We now have world composition enabled. What that is going to allow us to do is to place sublevels that are going to be parented to the persistent level here that will load in and load out based on our distance from that level. So to get that started, let's go ahead and just create a level real quick. What I'm going to do is create a level for each celestial body. So I'm going to have a level for a star. We'll be building two planets. And then we'll be nesting another sub-level inside one of those planets that's going to contain our asteroid refinery that we have shown off before. Let's get started with our star. In the Levels tab here, which you can find if you don't have this by going to Window, Levels. It may open a window. I just drag mine over here and dock it to the World Outliner tab. I'm going to go to Levels, Create New. We're going to call this one Charlie Star, because I'm going to place my star on this level. Now, Charlie Star is there, but nothing's going on with it yet. We haven't activated it, we haven't loaded it, we haven't made it current. Right now, Persistent Level is blue, and that is our current level. We can right-click on Charlie Star and click Load, and that allows it to load all the assets inside Charlie Star, which again is empty. We haven't placed anything in there yet. So let's go ahead and right-click and make current. By the way, you can always just right click and make current right away without loading first. So now Charlie Star is our current level. What I'm gonna to do to start off here is just bring in a sphere. I'm gonna move that to zero, 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 so it's right in the middle. And I'm going to increase its scale by quite a bit. We want a somewhat of a large star. Let me go ahead and give that guy a material. This is a simple emissive material with a multiplier of 400 or something like that. So we have our basic star. There it is, in all of its glory. Good old Charlie. I'm gonna go back to the world outliner here because I want to start instilling some good habits for organization. What I'm gonna do just to start off with is create folders for each level in this. So we'll go to Charlie's star and persistent. So now my player fighter, my star generator, and my directional light are going in persistent. This level bounds and the sphere are going in Charlie star. Now level bounds is the size of your level. By default, it has auto update bounds enabled. And what this does is it makes the size of the level, the size of all of your assets, the furthest away from the X, Y, and Z axes. Now, if you change, let's, let's go ahead and change the size of our star. Make it smaller. We'll go back to level bounds. You see it auto updated. So it's just containing the star. If we wanted to make things at its own size, you can't do that yet. Nothing happens. You have to disable this box and then you can change the size individually if you want. For now, we're just gonna leave it. We're not gonna do anything else with our sphere here. 
Let's leave this at 400. In the meantime, I do want to drag all of these guys out. So they are no longer in the star. Let's go ahead and save, and we'll play real quick. As I turn around, I should be able to see the star blinding me with all its glory. So there it is. We have our star. Let's go ahead and start making our second level here, and we're going to make this one a planet. So let's just back up out of here a little ways. Keep going. Keep going. All right, we'll place it right here. I'm going to go back to the Levels tab. I'm going to create new. I'm going to name this one Planet X. Planet X needs a planet. But first, we're going to make it current so that as we place assets in here, it's going to go to Planet X. As an example, I can turn off Charlie Star. I can turn it back on if I want. So I have a little Planet Generator blueprint here. I'm just going to utilize. It's there. That's a little close to the star there, so let's let's move that guy out. And there's our planet. Pretty simple. It's a little high up right now, so let's go ahead and move you down. Basic blueprint there. That's our level. One of the other things that we can do to move things around in it, is if I go to the Levels tab and go to Summons World Composition, this little button right here. I can click on that. And you get this basically, it's an overview map. Now it's zoomed way in, especially for the size that we're going for. So I'm going to zoom way out. So there's a lot of information on here that we have to pay attention to. First of all, this cursor is our camera. This is our star level. And this is our planet level. This orange box that you see is the recommended maximum size for Unreal's world composition. Now, obviously, our planet is outside of that. We'll get into that in just a second. This green and red intersecting lines, where they intersect is the world origin. Now, because Unreal is a 32-bit engine, as you go far enough out, the values of the math get so large that the engine actually, your computer starts giving calculation errors. So as you go outside of that, things start breaking, which is why this recommended size is here. Now, if I want to move an entire level and everything in it, I can simply move it on here. You can see how it updates accordingly, which is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and just save it this way. Oh, you'll see lighting needs to be rebuilt. I'm going to go to world settings and go under light mass. If you haven't exposed this already, go ahead and expose it and just check this box. Force no pre-computed lighting. That way our lights are dynamic. All right, so we're pretty good to go here. We should be able to see the planet, but we can't. It's not there. So where did it go? Well, the problem that we're running into right now is the planet is so far away that it's not being loaded. So if we go back to our world composition overlay here, I scroll back out. Up here, we have something called uncategorized. What that is, is that actually is a default layer. And layers are what world composition uses to load and unload levels based upon view distances that you set. Now, we have a streaming distance of 50,000 Unreal units, which really is not very many at all. Let's go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to name this one Celestial Bodies. So all my planets and my stars are going to be in it. I'm going to add three zeros here just because I want something enormous, because these bodies I want always loaded. Now I just shift clicked at both of these. I'm going to right click, assign to layer, celestial bodies. So they are now on celestial bodies. If I were to click on categorized, they go away because they're not on that layer. If I go to celestial bodies, they appear. Let's go ahead and save. I'll play. There's our planet. It's visible. Pretty cool, huh? So that's a very basic outline of that. Let's get into uh, a little bit more of some stuff that you may come across. We have a handy dandy little warp point blueprint here that I'm going to use. I'm going to place one back in Charlie Star. I'm going to make that current so that as I place it, if I decide to move Charlie Star, the warp point's going to move with it. So there's our warp point. Our warp point over there. Let's go ahead and save. I'm going to play. And if I warp to this point, 
Let's see what happens. It broke. Now I know exactly why it broke. The reason is, is it has to do with that 32-bit precision that I keep talking about. So we are warping outside the range of this box. And as we go out, more and more errors occur. And because, especially since we're warping and moving so fast, it's occurring rather quickly and it just breaks the game. Which is not very fun. How do we go around that, you might ask? Well, it's really quite simple. Let me actually move this guy even further out so I can better show this. What Unreal has built in to counteract this is a little button at the top of the world settings. Go down a little bit and you see enable world origin rebasing. We're going to go ahead and check that box. What that is going to do is as our camera moves, this origin where the green and red lines intersect is actually going to move and update with us. So as we move along, we shouldn't have to run into any calculation errors because we're not going to be outside of this recommended box. The box will move with us too. So let me bring this up here and I'll showcase this for you. Now that we have it enabled, we go ahead and save. I'll hit play and I'm going to do the same thing. We'll just warp over there. Watch in the lower left. You'll see the origin actually shifts with us and we were able to make it to our destination safely. One of the things that you may run into while editing is stuff may just suddenly disappear. This happens because world origin rebasing is on and I don't know exactly why that is, it just is. So when I'm editing, I tend to just disable world origin rebasing so that I can load and unload assets as I want, I guess levels as I want. Um, and that just makes things a little bit easier for me. So if you happen to run into some problems, uh, I would recommend while editing, just disabling this, and then before you play, make sure you turn it back on, otherwise you're going to break things. All right, so we have our basic system in place. Let's go ahead and add a third planet. And I'm gonna move it out over here. Let's add a new level. We'll call this one Planet Y. In Planet Y, let's place another planet. Place you. Gonna make you a little bit bigger. That's fine. I'm going to change a couple of the colors here just so I can make sure it is distinct from the other planet. There we go. And let's change the rings too. There. We got a blue planet, we got our brown, red, weird looking planet. Now one of the things that I forgot to do, kind of on purpose, is I did not load planet Y. I placed this planet in Charlie Star. So as I unload Charlie Star, the planet unloads too. I'm going to make this current. Now you're probably going to run into this, so this is why I'm showing this. I'm going to go to World Outliner, and I'm going to make sure I actually create a planet Y folder. And let's do a Planet X folder. Let's grab these guys here. Give you the Planet X and the level bounds. You're going to go to Planet X as well. This planet is going to go to Planet Y. This warp point is Charlie. And then these level bounds. Which level bounds are you? Oh, the level bounds are here because we still haven't placed this over to the correct level. So what I'm going to do is, while I have this highlighted in my world outliner, I'm going to right click on it, go to level, and then move selection to current level. The shortcut for this is control M. So as I move that, our level bounds should update, and they did. So that's a really easy way to just move things between levels. And while we still have planet Y current, let's go ahead and create a warp point here. So we can warp there. We'll give this a quick little test. Yeah. Well, that's kind of hard to see with the sun in our face, isn't it? I wonder. Okay. My bad. Move you over. Oh, you know what? 
it's not loading because we forgot to place it on the right layer. Something to keep in mind here. So let's go ahead and move you, assign the layer, celestial bodies. So now it should be able to load and we should be able to see it fine, even if we move you back. And actually, just for consistency's sake. All right, let's go ahead and play. There it is. So now we can warp from point to point. One of the things you'll notice though is the lighting is all off. <laughs> and one of the things you'll notice is I tend to forget things. Origin rebasing. All right, one last try here. There we go. So yes, you'll notice the lighting is way off because we have the star here, but the light is not coming from the right direction. How do we fix that? Well, you could go over and find your directional light right here. You could rotate it, but as I rotate it, it's gonna mess up the lighting of that one. It's even. There. Yep, now the plants lit the way that should be, but that one's not. And then what if my ship's over here? I get all sorts of lighting issues. So what we've done to fix this is we've actually created a blueprint for our suns. I'm going to go ahead and show that to you right now. Let me open up BP Sun here. And this is really simple, really easy to make. It just consists of the same thing that I made the sun with to begin with. We have a sphere, and inside we have a directional light, which I just called sunlight. In the event graph here, what we're doing is we're taking for every tick, and we're going to use this function called find look at rotation. And this is basically going to give us the coordinates from the sun. It's going to create a line from the sun to the player character, and it's going to rotate our sunlight in that direction so that no matter where the player goes, it seems like the sun is emitting light in every direction. So just as a quick overview of that, we have get player character, feeding into get actor location, and that's gonna be our target because we want our start of the line to be the sphere, which is this guy up here, which is our sun, and its world location. So it's gonna draw a line from there to the player and it's going to use that value as the new rotation of this set world rotation, and it's affecting the sunlight per tick. So let me go to Charlie Star. We do have it active. I'm going to delete you, drag you in, move it back to where it was, and just redo the size of it. So now we have a new light that's going to update as we play and face light towards it. To showcase that, I can put a light. Well, it's going to be a little difficult now. <laughs> there we go. You can see how this planet is not lit properly. If I go ahead and play, and if I move the ship over there, See, now it's lit properly because the light updated with us. But the problem with this is still a consistency problem. The lighting of this planet is not going to be correct. Actually, it may be correct for right now because we have not deleted the other directional light, which we don't need. So how do we go about getting both planets lit to make it simulate that light is emitting in every direction from the star? And so that each planet is lit the way that it should be, its face towards the star should be lit. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to be using Unreal's lighting channels for that. Now, Unreal has three different lighting channels in which you can tell each asset inside what it wants to be affected by. Channel zero, channel one, or channel two. So if I open my blueprint and I go to the actual individual meshes here, I can scroll down to lighting. And if you haven't exposed this already, lighting small, you expose that and then you can expose lighting channels. I'm gonna turn this off and go to channel one. And I'm gonna do this for every single mesh that I have in this. 
And then for this guy, I'm going to go planet, and I'm going to make this purse or this planet go to channel two. Now our planets are dark, which is not exactly what we want. But what we can do is if I go to planet Y and make it current, it just disappeared on me. So this is what I'm saying with the enable world origin rebasing. You'll notice that these other ones just undid themselves and things can get a little weird. So I just disable it and then you can make current all of these and you'll be able to see them just fine. All right, so let's get a light into this scene. We'll do directional light. And with the directional light, we wanna to go to the details of that. And we wanna make sure that under its light settings, expand those properties, we're gonna set you to channel two and only channel two. And we're gonna rotate it First, it needs to be rotated 45 degrees. I guess that's 90. Whatever, it needs to be rotated like that. And then we want to rotate it so that it's actually facing the sun. Now, yes, I do have some graphical glitches. I'm not going to worry about those right now. I'm going to go over here and do the same thing to Planet X. Make it current, drag in a directional light. I'm going to make sure it is only doing channel one and it is almost facing the right direction already. 45, close enough. There we go. Now we have both lit the way that they should be lit from the star. And let's do the last part of this just to kind of show this off. I'm going to create a sub-level inside of Planet X, and we're going to place a refinery in there. So this is going to show off how you can do different viewing distances within the levels that are nested in a hierarchy to another level. So we'll call this refinery. And I know my refinery blueprint is way too large, so we're going to size that down quite a bit. There it is. And again, we did not place it into the right place, make current, binary, level, move to current level. Now I would spend the time doing more folder stuff, but I'm not gonna worry about that for the purpose of this video. Now what we have here is this guy. We're going to nest this level into our planet X level. So if I bring up world composition overview again, I gotta scroll way out, sorry. And if I move this level, Planet X, the refinery is going to move with it wherever it went. Now it's back over there. Now as a last little bit here, I'm going to show you as I move this warp point over there it should be okay. Again, world comp or origin rebasing not turned on. There we go. Save, play, full screen that. You can see that you can't see the asteroid now. The refinery is not there because it's on the default layer, remember? So if I warp and I get close enough. I may need to fast forward this to show you. Bear with me here. And there it is. You can see how it just loaded in because we were within 50,000 Unreal units from it. So, yep, that's the basic overview of world composition for a space game and how we have things set up. We're going to be doing a little more trickery because obviously with only three lighting channels, you need a primary for most of your assets. You need one for this planet, one for this planet. But what if you have more than two planets? There's some other things that go into that. But this should at least give you a basic setup for how to create a space game using world composition that has very long distances for you to travel without any load times. If there's any other tutorials you'd like to see in the future, please make sure to leave a comment down below. And of course, if you have any questions, we'd be more than happy to answer that. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the near future.